So our next speaker is uh, Paida, uh, Paida Mataranika. She's coming from University of Namibia um, and she'll be talking about Marama Bean, a hidden gem for Africa. I'm looking forward to hunting for the gem. Paida, the floor is yours. Um, Thank you, Dr. Eric. Um, um, as you mentioned, my name is Paida. I am currently um, a PhD candidate at the University of Namibia in microbiology. I have been working with um, Marama Bean since my undergrad, hence my interest in it. And it, it is a very fascinating quote, and I hope you think of it the same way as well. So today's discussion is around, it's, the basis of it is around the sustainable development goal number two that was set up by the UN. And this goal is to make sure that there is zero hunger. That is to eliminate all forms of food shortage, hunger, malnutrition by the year 2030 across the globe. Now, how can we do that? What does Africa have to contribute to that? This is of particular importance in Africa because close to half the population suffers from some kind of food shortage or malnutrition. And this is made worse by land degradation, which is making agricultural performance very low, um, increased frequency of droughts and climate change. This is making all these scenarios are making agriculture in Africa far more difficult than, than it already is. And when we now speak of food security, what are we saying? What is food security? When we're talking about food security, we're saying everyone at all times has, enough, um, has adequate access uh, to nutritious, safe food for everyone, and it has to be sufficient. So by, um, when we're speaking of access, meaning economic access, which means people have the funds to purchase the food and the food is available to people. The next thing we have to talk about as well is food insecurity. What is it? When we're talking about food security, fine. Everyone has enough food at all times, but what about food insecurity? That is where now we have insufficient access to or possession of food. However, I feel like these two definitions leave a lot of room for expansion. Let's talk about nutritional security. We have mentioned that in, in food security, but is the food edible? That is something we need to ask as well. Is the food palatable? Insects, for example, locusts to in particular, they're edible, they're nutritious, but are they palatable? I, for one, would not be quick to go and grab a handful as a snack, but they are a very good food option. Therefore, when we're looking at Africa, looking at what is the natural fruits, vegetables, other crops, other crops that are here, can we broaden the food base in Africa? Instead of just saying we've got half the population, close to half the population who do not have adequate access to food, what is there that we can say, okay, let's try and expand the, the, um, the food base in Africa? This brings me to marama bean. Marama bean, scientifically known as Thalassema esculenta. It is a legume that grows in poor sandy soils in arid climates. And I have a few here with me. I hope you can see that they actually grow very large and they have a very hard um, outer coating, which makes them difficult to cook as Prof Katere was, was a bit anxious about. Um, they have about roughly 18 month um, cycle and they also grow from a tuber. This tuber is very rich in carbohydrates and proteins and it is edible for up to a year or two. It is also interesting to know that the tubers can grow very large, up to 100, 200 kgs. After a year, after a year or two, which they can, they can be eaten, they become very fibrous and then <clears throat> They become more of um, water storage. Um, they become, yeah, they're more for, of, for um, storing water and they can grow very large as I mentioned. Now, marama bean, what exactly is so fascinating about it? As I mentioned before, it grows in poor sandy soils. 
Um, it has a minimum input requirement, meaning there's really not much need for fertilizer and water. That is frequent watering. It also has a high protein content that ranges up to 39%, with also oil contents that are very high. Different um, accessions have been found to have um, varying amounts from 32 to 42%. As I also mentioned before, it has a life cycle um, of up to 18 to 20 months and can um, continue producing for about 20 cycles. It can be eaten as a legume in itself, um, that is the legume will be boiled for about an hour. Um, oil can be extracted from it. It's, it is very rich in oil. Milk can also be um, obtained from it, like soya milk. You'll have uh, maram, marama milk. It can also be ground to a flour. So I cracked a few of them, and this is what you find inside. And they can be ground into a flour, which, is, which then can be used to fortify um, cereals. Traditionally, here in Namibia, some tribes use it um, as remedial medicine to treat things like um, diarrhea, but studies have found antioxidants within it. So comparing marama bean to other legumes, it ranks very high, right under soybean, with an average protein content of about 32%. That is impressive. So we have a legume not used a lot, not consumed, not commercially produced, with a very high protein content just out there in the wild. So a, a, a project in Botswana called the Useful Plant Project actually went a step um, further with, with it and engaged communities to develop products from the marama bean. And they came up with marama oil, marama milk. They actually made some marama cookies. I have not been able to get in touch with them to see if I could get some samples, but they, is, they are products out there. Now to the distribution of marama bean. Marama bean grows in the eastern parts of Namibia where there's sandy soils. And it also grows in southern parts of Botswana and northern parts of South Africa and some parts of Zimbabwe, very little parts. However, there are other marama species. Um, I have not had the opportunity to um, analyze them or to taste them, but they can be found all the way up to Eastern Africa, close to the Horn of Africa. So we have all these different species that could potentially have, um, that could potentially be useful. There are also other legumes of note. I'm just mentioning these because um, they, are, they are what I'm currently working on, but they also arid climate tolerant legumes, which have been found to actively improve soil quality when um, they're grown in any part. So they are also um, good options to, to, to improving food security in Africa. So what are we saying? Africa, is in a dire state when it comes to food security. When we're speaking of close to half the African population does not have sufficient access to food, that is not a good number. So we have, we do have crops that can um, improve the situation. Marama bean is a good option. It's a matter of convincing not only the government to take it on, but also convincing people to give it a try, to try the marama bean, you know, try and cook it, try and include it in your cereals. Let's see what you think of it. The oils, they can also be used in cosmetics. What do you think about it? Tell us what you think, would you like to continue having it? As mentioned before, people want to, people now are more likely to, to go for Western food, but we have marama bean here and it's, it's very exciting. Um, I would like to thank my supervisors and the Kirk House Trust that has been funding this um, project for a while now. I only jumped onto it towards the end, not the towards the end, but I've only jumped onto it recently. But it, it, is, it has been going on for a while. They've been um, working at um, scientifically getting to know it, knowing its association with um, microbes, what um, other 
antioxidants are present and what else we can get from it? What is there in the marama bean that we can use in our favor? I'd also like to thank Prof Katerere and Pharma Connect who have actually given this platform for us to communicate during these times where we cannot really travel to see each other. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.